Hello boys and girls, this is your old friend RJ City, and today I will be watching the trailer to 1987's Nuki, starring no one I know. It's a film that I had never heard before. I'm going through a long list of the worst movies of 1987. I'm on a 1987 kick, I continue to be, and this uh, was highly unrecommended to me as an extraordinarily bad film. I know nothing about it. The title seems gross. It's not pleasant to look at. It's not even enjoyable to say. So without any further adieu, let us watch the trailer to 1987's Nuki. Nico, Ooh, Nico, space. I love are, it, Nuki. Are these are two stars two that are talking? No! They're aliens? Are separated. You can tell it's a UFO. Okay. They blew their money on this shot. One is recovered. I want the alive. The other the hell is that? must find his way on a strange planet. <laughs> confronting the perils of the jungle. What a disgusting alien! <laughs> Good frozen acting! And finding two friends along the way. Yeah. He's a magic Why? alien that Why? puts animals this to is... sleep. I need my brother. Help me to find him. What does name of men you look for? America. America? No, America is the country where I come from. Every, you gotta come back to America. Spaceship. It will take extraterrestrial spirit and courage, oh, no. along with the help of two native brothers, oh, to reunite no, no, these no, no, space no. travelers. Nuki. In the tradition of E.T. <laughs> no. and close encounters of a third kind, no, it's not. comes a magical adventure oh, God, of two pairs of brothers wet. from different universes. <laughs> Nuki. Holy fucking shit. That made Mac and me look like Ben-Hur. First of all, I love that both aliens speak perfect English at the beginning of the film. And they're, they just, they travel in stars, I guess. And they're like, eh, Nuki. Nuki and an unnamed brother. Because it's, it's about Nuki. No one gives a shit about the other guy. His name's probably Doug or something. Uh, so I guess they were vacationing from their, I assume, tattered planet, or maybe they were escaping, that makes no sense, but they're young, they seem like ch children, aliens, uh, brothers, vacationing, and they, or maybe they're just joyriding around the galaxy, and then they decide to land on Earth, I guess they wanted to go to America, maybe they saw a commercial on their TV and they thought, hey, uh, Oregon looks like fun, let's go there, and then, you know, with all their astute technology, somehow they manage to get separated and Nuki gets lost in his star. Oh, but they're being tracked. They are absolutely being tracked uh, by the government. And the government's good. You know, you see the UFO footage today in real life. The government, you can't make out what it is just like this blip this green blip and then it'll move and you know, what the hell was that and nobody can quite identify it in this movie uh, the government is so well equipped they have such good technology that the radar system will actually say ufo they've identified it as a ufo and so you can just watch the label move around the screen and then when it lands there is a scroller there's a running lower third that says touchdown. So if you work for this government, I don't know if it's uh, NASA or the FBI or whatever it is, you don't really need uh, any prior knowledge of UFOs or science or anything. All you need to do is uh, know how to read and it'll tell you everything you need to know on the screen. A lot of, uh, I want to say they're drone shots, they're probably helicopter shots in 1987. Uh, going along the ocean of the trajectory of this spaceship. And I think 
that's what they must have spent most of the budget on uh, because it seems to be spent nowhere else. Certainly not on the quality of these aliens who look like they're made out of burlap. They seem like potato-y creatures. It's a very, it's like a high school production. It's their gross, they're unpleasant, yet we're supposed to love them for some reason. They're small, maybe they're toddlers in these sacks with these giant, disgusting heads. So Nuki, to my understanding, uh, crash lands in Africa in a remote village, although I think an astronaut happens to be there, or maybe he visits at the end, and a nun. There's always a nun. Uh, when they need a nun character, they'll just add a nun. This is a good place to be. I guess the whole thing is set in Africa, and Nuki wants to get to America to reunite with his brother, who is, I believe, held captive by the U.S. government. Who doesn't want to kill it, though? They still want it uh, alive. A lot of thing bothers me. I, I, okay, first, this just is just so much to take in. You're like, jungle, space, uh, magic. The alien, in addition to, you know, being an alien, is just straight up magical. Waves his fingers. There's a little abracadabra routine happening. And uh, one of the African men freezes and falls over. Great acting on his part. Really had to stiffen up there. And then these two brothers uh, uh, from Africa, I believe they're the allegory and they're they're mirroring the other brothers. And it's like, aren't all brothers the same in, all, in this universe? Don't we all just want to be together? Isn't the meaning of life togetherness? That's, I guess, what they thought. Um, they're going to be, uh, a lion's going to get them. Or a lioness. I don't really. And again, Nuki's just watching from the bushes. Because those, those bushes are so dense that they're so easy to hide behind. And goes, fla, And uh, the lion falls asleep. And you know he falls asleep because he's got a little bit of mime acting in him where he can paw over his face. And maybe he, maybe he yawns like that. Maybe they got him growling or roaring and they put a yawn sound effect voiceover over and says, oh, I'm asleep. And I'm sure they go, thank you. Uh, alien Nuki for saving us uh, from this this predator. How can we help you? And Nuki must have gone. Let's let's just cause general mischief uh, before I have to get back to my brother. I love that astronaut. Like no no one in Africa could help apparently, so they had to send this American astronaut in to go America. I know where that is. We have. Uh, McDonald's and water slides and slushies. And then I also want to say that, first of all, that helicopter, is it a spaceship or is it a helicopter? It looks disgusting. It doesn't look like what you would think that star would be. It's dirty and very 70s and it has all these buttons that have perfect English. Good thing this alien speaks incredible English and can write and is literate or else we really would have had some sort of dramatic obstacle in this movie. His fingers are so, like, just snubby and fat and oddly shaped. But, and the buttons are so small. There's no way he could be pressing these buttons. You just, these small buttons that are like, start, lift off. And it's the most disgusting finger coming down. And then you see the two of them together at the end, which really spoils the whole fucking movie. And for some reason, their noses and eyes are really wet. I don't know if it's allergy season on their planet, or they're just so emotional to see each other that they do a hard snot cry. Uh, but either way, that is the wonderful tale of Nuki. And I can say without hesitation that it seems to be one of the worst movies of 1987. It seems like it's one of the worst movies ever. And I assure you, it is not a movie I want to see in full. Goodbye, Nuki.